Okay, so I guess it's my turn. Uh, my name is Fred Gibbs. I am an associate professor in the history department here at UNM. I did my uh, PhD at the University of Wisconsin Madison uh, in, a while ago. <laughs> so go, go Badgers. Uh, my original research was in uh, medieval and early modern poison, and I just uh, published a book on that last year, which puts me in the top five people in the world that know about medieval poison. Also, the top five people who have irrelevant skills. Um, as soon as I finished my dissertation, I started working more in the digital humanities, and that's why I'm here uh, today. I, my first job was at George Mason University and the Center for History and New Media, which you may have heard of because they make Omeka. Uh, I worked with the project team there for four years as director of digital scholarship uh, before coming here. So my biggest interest academically is, uh, is really two things. I study the history of, uh, I don't do medieval poison anymore, but I do the history of, of food, diet, and health. My training is in history of science and medicine. So I'm very interested to hear from you if you know things about the history of food and agriculture in New Mexico. It's a fascinating topic that has been totally understudied, uh, but just a really unique story that I'm trying to learn more about. So I hope I can talk to more of you about that. Uh, one of my other main interests, uh, besides food and food history, is in digital cultural heritage. And uh, I'm very interested in thinking about the intersection between digital and public history and building a distributed digital infrastructure for cultural heritage in New Mexico. Uh, I'm, not, I'm from Minnesota. I grew up in the Midwest. I've been in D.C. for a few years, and now I'm here, so I'm a complete foreigner to the Southwest. And uh, I just completely fell in love with the culture and the, the history and the heritage and everything around New Mexico, so I'm trying to learn more and more. But as I am naturally inclined, I do everything digitally uh, first, and it's been frustrating to see how difficult it is to find a cohesive sort of digital sort of footprint of New Mexico. It's very distributed uh, among lots of different institutions, a lot of things obviously still not digitized, ongoing process. Um, I teach digital history courses here at UNM, and every, not every semester, but every uh, three or four semesters at the most, I'm hoping to make that sooner. I have a group of 20 to 30 students that really wants to get involved in creating uh, websites or creating sort of digital heritage, or doing digital heritage work for projects, for real community projects, not just something for class. Uh, and so I've been thinking about sort of how can I work with partners across the state, different institutions, different individual projects, uh, whatever size the scope, to help consolidate uh, all the digital stuff we know about New Mexico heritage. How, how can we continue to build that archive? That's what this Manitos uh, Omeka site is for. And I'll talk more about sort of how the Manitos project in Omeka and sort of this larger view of connecting digital heritage might work in a second. Uh, with a, Good friend and colleague in the history department, Taylor Spence, I'm uh, putting together paperwork uh, literally this week on uh, creating an undergraduate minor uh, in uh, digital heritage studies, which is also going to be a graduate certificate, as part of sort of facilitating getting students and getting in UNM resources involved in sort of consolidating, promoting, and creating a, a stable uh, but distributed infrastructure for uh, for working with digital cultural heritage. Uh, we get so much of our knowledge of history and our own heritage through digital spaces, Facebook, obviously, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. There's just lots of places where people learn about the past, rightly or wrongly, from online sources. We don't really engage with that critically enough about where this information comes from, what does historical research look like, how is history, how is cultural heritage repurposed in lots of ways for, for various different agendas. So infrastructure, I talked about that a little bit. I really mean two things, right? A set of digital repositories that can provide open access to data and materials, as some of the stuff you were uploading uh, yesterday, and the ability to tell stories in compelling ways. So we have just a great seed in the Benitez archive, just 20-something items I saw uh, earlier this morning. There could easily be more. Hopefully, the number will continue to grow. Uh, but what do we do with it? Right? Archiving for archival sake is important, but now what? What do you do with stuff once it's in an archive? Right? What is, why, why, do they, why do you want to archive something? Because it has meaning, right? It's important. And that meaning comes through 
how people talk about it, right? It comes through stories, it comes through using it, right? Not just being cataloged in, in, in some way. So I want to make sure that um, we talk a little bit about storytelling. And I don't have a, you know, I don't have sage wisdom to impart to you. I'm from the Midwest. We don't do that. Uh, so I really want to have more of a conversation with you about what kinds of stories do you want to tell. More importantly, from a technology perspective, because that's that's why I'm here. Is what kind of tools do you need? What kind of uh, what kind of what do you want the stories to look like? So I want to talk about some Omega sites. Uh, I know the screen's off, even though I'm gesturing at it. Uh, I'll put it up in a second. Some more Omeka sites we saw a few, uh, with Margie's presentation a few days ago. Um, I want to look through more Omeka sites and, and sort of critique what the standard interface is and how we might want to think about going beyond that standard interface that Omeka gives us for storytelling. Look at a, a couple other examples of way people tell stories. You all have your own favorite sites where you read and get information and you see things you thought, oh, I really want to do that. I really want to incorporate that kind of storytelling. Uh, in, in, into a project of yours. One thing before we get into these in particular storytelling sites, I want to say a little bit more about Omeka, the platform we're using. I know it's really new to many of you. Uh, you've learned a lot about sort of adding items to our, let's turn the screen on, adding items to your collection. Is that big enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So here's here's the Benitez Community Memory Project homepage. You've all seen this, I think, at some point by now. Uh, you spent a lot of time. Uh, adding items or watching people add items. Uh, we have 21 total now. I'm logged in as an administrator, so I don't know if you've seen this view before, but I can see everything. Uh, and here's all the stuff we've, we've uploaded. Um, we're using a platform, obviously, as you all know by now, called Omeka. Um, I want to say a little bit about the, the, about the platform. Omeka's been around since 2009, I think. Um, and it's really just in the last couple of years undergone kind of a, a paradigm shift in sort of how it manages data. There's now two versions of Omeka, and so if you go out in the world and you try to Google Omeka and learn more about it, as I hope you will, you'll see that there's really two different flavors of it now. There's Omeka Classic, right, which is the original version, and there's the version we're using, which is called Omeka S. And the S stands for semantic. And the idea behind how they've sort of recoded it, they've really rebuilt the whole thing. It's not just a new version. It's a, it's a, it's a really kind of a new product. Uh, they packaged it in a way that allows the data, the, the metadata you're entering, all the descriptions about items and so on, the resources that are, the collections, everything you see here, all this information. It's a lot more visible, it's a lot more extensible, and it's a lot more connectable to other kind of resources. That's the main uh, shift in Omeka S. Actually, that's one of two main shifts. The other one, which is very important for the sort of initiative that I was talking about a second ago uh, in terms of creating a distributed digital archive, is one big problem with the Mecca Classic is that just in the introductions we heard, half a dozen at least different projects people are working on and we're talking about using possibly using Omeka to, you know, to uh, create collections and to create websites for a project. One of the big problems with Omeka S is that everyone who does that, their projects are fundamentally separate. You can catalog your data really well. You can put the best headings and descriptors there uh, that you can find, but it's everything is still really disconnected. For totally different projects, that's okay, but for very closely related projects, that's actually a huge hindrance to have things in silos. Is there a hand? Yes. I just can't hear you very well. You can't. Yeah, there's plenty of seats right here. I can, I can talk louder, but then I'd be really shouting. That becomes uncomfortable. Uh, but, okay. Is anyone else having trouble hearing? I can try to amp it up a little. I don't think we have microphones. Okay. Uh, but thank you for letting me know. I'll be, I'll be conscious of that. Uh, so it's a problem if you have lots of related Omega sites that aren't connected. There's really nowhere to no way to share data between them very easily without a complicated manual process. Omeka S tries to get rid of that problem. It does get rid of that problem. 
by allowing you to have different sites. <coughs> so you can see up here, uh, it's a little small. Okay, the formatting gets weird when you zoom in, but it's more important you can read it. If I click on the Sites tab, not sure if you see the Sites tab, with your permissions that I gave you, you're all editors. I'm a global administrator, uh, as Margie and Amy and sort of and, and Alan. Um, we'll talk more about permissions in a second. I heard there were some more questions about that uh, data yesterday. Uh, you can see signed in as me, New Mexico Digital Heritage Sites. There's one site we created, Anita's community memory. Using Omeka S, we can create lots of different sites that seem independent of each other. They can have different URLs, they can have totally different aesthetics, they can have different, they tell different stories, they can be about different collections. But the power that Omeka S gives us that we didn't have an Omeka Classic was that all of the things that people upload for related projects go into the same repository. So that they're all findable, they're all sort of visible to each other. You can set uh, Tag, you can use tags and you can use what's called item sets. I'm not going to get too much into the, the nitty gritty of this. We can go over it later if people want to know more technical detail. I'm just trying to sketch out what's possible with the platform as it relates to exactly what so many of you were talking about in the introductions. We can create different websites here, but all of the stuff that's being uploaded, the images, the videos, the oral histories, whatever materials we have, goes in the same repository so that it makes it much easier to sort of share items between projects. You can restrict who can see them and who can use them. One of the problems with the Mecca S, or sorry, with the Mecca Classic is that if you just had a giant repository and there were started to get thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of items, right, it becomes very difficult to manage. And so if you're creating one website just for your stuff and you've got 200 things, you have to wade through 10,000 objects, right, just to use your 200. That's crazy. It's just such a waste of time, right? This allows you to sort of partition off what you can see and what you can't see and focus on building from a certain aspect of your collection, but the collection is all together, sort of behind the scenes. This makes it much easier to share resources and connect resources. We talked a lot about that as all blurring together. Yesterday, a couple days ago, in Library of Congress headings, and how do you label stuff so that it becomes related and relatable in, you know, in behind the scenes of this platform. So that's Omeka S, different from Omeka Class allows us to create different sites. So many of you were talking about different projects. Um, I'm hoping that we can create, uh, I, set up, I set up the Omega S instance so I can do whatever you want me to do for it. But we can set up other sites, right, where you can add stuff to this collection, this digital, uh, this New Mexico digital heritage collection, right, but you can maintain a project that's sort of your own, right, that has maybe nothing to do with Manitos, right, but this is our, obviously, example seed project. Any questions or con confusion about that, of what you can do with the Mecca S versus the Classic? So, I have a website on WordPress mm -hmm. that, are, are you saying I could transfer it under the Manitos Community Memory? So, or, because my site is related to this project, mm -hmm. And it, it gain more visibility if it's connected to this? How do, I'm not sure. You're not sure what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about sort of stuff, the stuff you uploaded yesterday, yeah. right? So images, other sort of cultural heritage stuff that you want people to be able to see and be visible. Um, that all goes into sort of a giant database behind the scenes. It's, you know, this is, this is what it looks like. It's the, it's the list of items, right? So you have a WordPress site that's not that made that the WordPress site is doesn't really have any items like this as part of a collection that's not really a digital archive. Well, it is. It does have a collection. Well, it has pages with content, right? But it well, doesn't have items with metadata in the same way, right? It has a little bit of that. Okay. So those items, you could take those items and upload them into Omeka S, right? And they would be alongside these, and you can also uh, sort of create a collection of just your stuff that you can work with, right? But at least, it, but everything will be sort of together. Does that make sense? So yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I want to talk about in terms of Omeka, I don't think you talked about this before, um, and this is this is true for both versions of Omeka, so this is not, this is not new functionality. One thing, one reason we're using Omeka 
It's a very functional archival platform for these kinds of resources. But what it also gives us out of the box, so we don't have to build anything uh, from scratch, is the ability to create uh, to create sites. To create, well, we can create sites. We can also create pages. We can tell stories. That's the important thing. So I've clicked on the Manitas Community Memory, and so you can go, uh, once you're logged in as an administrator, you can see the different pages. We only have two. We have the home page, which you've seen, and we have another page on Taos with Locks. I think I've already uh, loaded that up here. Oh, so here's, I, here's the default view, right? You've seen, I don't know if you've seen this since you uploaded the items. You've seen this image and this text before. All the items you've uploaded yesterday automatically sort of show up in this uh, list here. We have one page that we've created, just as a, a test page, on Taos Woodlocks. And here it is. There's text, and then there's a few images we put on. Uh, and then, just for fun, I threw in, uh, to make sure it was going to work the way I thought, uh, threw in an image that someone uploaded uh, yesterday. The ability, so this is a pretty crude page, right? There's this text and some images, right? Because we were just making sure everything was going to display. Uh, you can tell very elaborate stories here with Omeka, and this is one of the reasons we wanted to use this platform. So you should all be able to do this as editors. So when you are in the back end here and you can see pages, right? you have the ability to create new pages, this add new page button. You can also edit pages. This might be easier just to edit one to get a sense of what happens. So let's go back to the Taos wood blocks for a second. Notice what it has on it. Just think in terms of blocks. It's, it's ironic that this page is about wood blocks. Forget about that for a second. But blocks of text. Here's a title, right? Here's paragraphs of text. Here's an image gallery, right? And then here's a separate image down here, right? Those are the those are the blocks of the page. There's no design. There's really no effort to make it look pretty. This is just sort of the raw functionality because it's easier to understand how it works. If we go back to the back end and we click on the Taos wood blocks page, we want to edit it. Click on the pencil icon. You get to the page edit, right? So I don't know if you've seen this screen before, but this is where you can. This is where we can use the resources that you've been uploading into the archival platform. It's open. Notice that the big blocks on the administrator page mirror what you saw on the website. There's a title here. There's HTML, it's just text, right, which you can style however you want to. We scroll down the page, we see there's an item showcase, those three images that we saw in the middle of the page here get put there automatically by adding an item showcase, which is over here. If you want to add a new block, really this is confusing because we picked out what blocks as a sample page. If you want to add a new block, a title, a text, a video, uh, any item that's in your collection, this is how you do it. Okay, so you see drawing from the well is the is the is the, new block. is the is the new block that I just randomly added, right? So we can add another one at the bottom of the page. Again, not putting any effort into design or making this pretty. Yeah. So that drawing from the well was done by my neighbor right here. Yeah. And she did it in the and it was in the big list that we saw. We yeah. all saw. That's right. And she you moved it over to this block. Well, I didn't move it. You I just. I just told that page to display it. Display it. Okay. So we can add uh, items, whatever they might, whatever format they might be. Clicking on the media button, we want to sort of showcase the items. Everything you've uploaded is called an attachment. If you click the add attachment button here, it brings up a list of all the stuff that's in this collection that this website can see, right? the NITOS Community Memory website, this is the stuff that it can look at, right? If you had a different project, you'd have a different list of stuff here, right? <laughs> One option is to do the quick add, it gives you some check boxes, right? If you want to add a bunch of stuff at once, or I'll just take the first one, if I click on it here, it brings up information about the item. You can enter a caption for it. Apply changes, and you see over here, it just updated really quickly. There's a new media block. 
scroll up. Here's our old media blog drawing from the well. Here's our new one. Big buttons on the top of the page. Save it. And if we go back to our Talus Woodblocks page, looks the same because we haven't refreshed it yet. Control R. And then here it is. So adding items, being able to tell stories with them, is, and there's my caption there, uh, it's pretty easy, right? The basic functionality. So one of, one of the things I want to talk more about this morning is sort of what do we want it to look like? What do we want the stories to look like? What is the digital format? This is ugly. We don't want to just use this. We want to make it nicer. But that's not up to me. It's up to people who are telling the story. So I want to learn more about that. This is something we can continue to build on. Shane? Yeah, just a, just a quick detail question. So now, once there's hundreds of things in there, when you are looking for assets to put in the page, yeah. there's a search bar at the top of the add new blog. That's for, so when you, went to, or when you added a new asset, there was a search thing. Yep. Is that searching all fields for everything? Like, you know, people are going to want to find the stuff they just uploaded, but it's going to hopefully be in thousands and thousands of lines. Uh, right. Does that search all the, all the search fields for whatever they're looking for? Uh, it does. It okay. searches, as, as far as I know, it searches through all the metadata, it searches okay. through item descriptions, you know, whatever text you've associated with an item, no matter what field it's in, it should be able to search it. Okay, great. Um, and you can also, as you, I brought up here as you were talking, so you can filter it by class, by item set. Again, this is how you can help, you know, as lots of different projects are putting at items into a shared repository, this is how you can sort of filter it by stuff that you're more, more interested in. So you don't have to search through. We only have 20, so it's easy to pick one of 20 items, but if there's 20,000, uh, you don't want to sit here and scroll for three days. But. Uh, so the filtering and the searching works really well to help you find items, right? Uh, great, great question. Any questions about creating pages, at least the basic plan? Uh, sorry, in the back, yeah. Uh, we meant to be able to create pages with our access, because I can't get to like edit or anything from my screen. Okay, so no one has permission to create pages, is that true? I know. Uh, I can update everyone's um, permissions to have more um, permission, I guess, to create pages. So I, I thought editor, I was, I, may, I, I thought you would be able to create pages as an editor. I guess that's not true. So uh, the next one up, I forgot what it, what it's called, but I can I can just change everyone's permission so that you'll be able to create pages. The goal is that you'll be able to create pages, right? So that's very Sorry, important. Sorry, we just figured it out. So we can create pages. We were trying to edit your page. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can yeah, create your own pages. That icon wasn't there, but we yes. found the new site. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. So you're an editor of your own stuff, but don't mess with mine. I guess that's the best And a lot of the issues around permissions and who can edit what, who can create what, that's really, uh, the technical stuff is pretty straightforward. There's, it's pretty easy to set permissions on an individual person level or have, have groups of people that have the same permissions. Um, a lot of the challenges with permissions are really just about group dynamics, like who's, who do you want to be able to edit things and, and how often and so on and so forth. Uh, but the tool is pretty flexible about who can do what. Uh, it's not infinitely flexible, so it might not always work exactly the way you want, but it's pretty flexible. Good, there's another question. Uh, yes. I just wondered, uh, on, on some of this there's a wrench, a red wrench next to the garbage can. If you scroll down a little bit, yeah. what does that mean? There. Yep. Uh, it, it gives you options when I, uh, let's just click on it. Um, it brings up the attachment to allow you to change the caption. You're kind of editing, you're editing how the image is going to show up on the page. You're not actually editing the actual item in the collection. You're just editing how it's going to show up on the page. Does that make sense? Yes. That's it's what the red wrench tool. is. Sorry? A fix-it tool. Okay. Yeah, fix-it tool. Yeah. Fixing is good. Amy? Do you happen to know if the caption is going to function as an alt, as alt text, which we're going to talk about later? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I'm not sure how it gets coded, but let's look. It has a caption tag, but that's it. Um, what does the image do? Uh, 
Uh, it has an alt tag, so clearly there was some place I could have entered alt text. I didn't. Um, you can use that out of the grid. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's kind of there, but we're not using it. Okay. Uh, yes? So the images when they're uploaded, do they go up on a certain resolution or DPIs or whatever so that they're usable? Um, when you upload an image, it uploads it and saves it in the digital collection at whatever image, whatever resolution you have. So it doesn't reduce it. It does create a thumbnail version of it. So when you're in the um, when you're in the admin screen and you see small ones like this, it creates smaller versions to use on the site. Uh, but it maintains the original resolution. You can uh, when you uh, when you are uh, using images on your pages, you can you can tell it to have a smaller resolution if you want it to be a smaller image. But it, it saves the one in the database is the original resolution. It doesn't automatically make it smaller. Does that answer your question? Can you set it to hold a certain resolution and keep it? It just it just saves whatever you give it. So if you want it, if you want it, if you want it uh, I don't know if there's a way to force it to use a certain resolution. I think you would probably have to do that to your own images first and then upload them. Because it, it really just wants to take what you give it and it saves that. It assumes that you've given it what you want it to have. It doesn't really do, it, it doesn't have built-in image editing into it. it. It expects you to do that outside. And there are better tools for that than no matter would be anyway. So. Great, other questions about creating pages, basic stuff here. Oh, no. um, so you mentioned that if people want to upload collections that are similar or whatever, that they should, you know, maybe do a, a separate item set. Is that do people have permission to do that themselves, or do they have to contact the site? When you upload items, you should be able to. There's there are. Uh, <coughs> You can, you can, when you upload items, you can indicate what item set they should be in. And I think your permissions dictate what your choices will be. So, uh, so it's a little bit of both. So, so they can create new item sets? I'm not sure what, the, I'm not sure what permission level can create item sets. I have to figure that out, but thank you for the question. I will figure that out. Yeah. But certainly that's one thing we want you to be able to do, right? So you can have projects go into the centralized repository, but sort of group things as you think will be useful for you. Great. Any other questions about the basics of page creation? Yes? Um, I feel like I missed like, where you initially showed where you go to create a page. And sure. Very time. Yeah, sorry. I do things way too fast. Uh, if you go to the... the uh, the basic admin dashboard, which you should see something like this. Um, there's sites. Someone created a test site, maybe. Uh, when so just take one of our libraries and make us make it a site. Yeah. So one of the so the first thing because Omega S manages multiple sites. Whenever you're here, if you just look on the left. You see items and you're looking for pages and so on, you don't see anything, it's a little confusing because you're expecting everything to be over there. You have to make sure you've sort of picked a site first. Um, some of you might not see this page exactly because of the permissions, but as long as you're focused on the Benito's community memory project, um, when you're logged in, you will see a, a bar at the top of the page. So this is kind of the preview mode that allows you to edit and create pages and so on. Um, there's a link for pages, which kind of is a shortcut to this page. It also shows up on the left. Once you've selected a site to administer, uh, you see the title of the site here, and then underneath that, sort of block header, you see site info, pages, navigation, and so on. And so what I've talked about just creating one page. Obviously, good stories, good sites have multiple pages, so you need to set up or think about what you want your navigation scheme to look like and how you want to link the pages together and so on. Uh, so if I go to pages and I can add a new page uh, here or edit an existing one. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't see the add a new page um, button on that. Is that because it's not a site? Yeah, I actually don't. It's, there's no like button. There's, 
sites, but we can't add pages to the site that's already there. It's because you're the admin. Yeah. No, I am. Not. I am. Uh, okay. So if you, no one can add. Well, some people have added pages, right? No. Oh, I thought. I actually can't. Just the administrator has the page, new pages. Okay. All right. Uh, we will change the permissions. So if you're not seeing add new page, it's probably a permissions issue. If you can edit other pages or see them. Does everyone see this? The pages, does everyone see this page? Yeah, we can we can open them, but we can't delete or edit them. Yeah. Okay, so they're yeah, there, can, but you don't have We can add a site, but we can't add a page. Okay, that's confusing to me, but we'll fix it. All right, so I will bump up the permissions so that you will all be site administrators, and then you will be able to add a new page. But then you can also delete what we've already put in the original list. See, that, that has been my objection. I spent the time to put in an item and someone, no, no malice, I'm sure, deleted it because we're off in the chain rail. Or he went in and edited one of my items and I have no knowledge that the editing was, we were just kind of testing to see mm -hmm. what we could do. Right. Um, I think that's a, a real problem. It is a that is why there are that is why there are different sites. So we've been all using the same site, right? Um, that's why it's so important to have. This is why Omega S exists, as from opposed to the classic. Is we can, you can have different sites, and every per, all the permissions are associated with a particular site. So, so if you want to have your stuff that other people can't mess around with, we'll create a new site for you, or you'll have permissions to create a new site, and then you will be. You will, you will allow other people, you will set the permissions of what they can and can't do. And other people can't delete your stuff in your site. So each one of us will have our own site, is that what you're saying? Different projects will probably have their own site, mm -hmm. but at the same time, all of the stuff that you're uploading, all of the images and so on, are going into sort of the same general repository to make okay. it easier to share. Things. So we'll have our own site, but everything will be migrated somehow into one big repository. But if, my thing is, if we get something wrong, Some way, I understand that there needs to be one person somehow, or that they need, you know, you guys can contact us and say, you know, yes. I'll the name on it. So, I think we can go ahead. Here, here's the administrator page, which I'm quite positive you guys can't see. Uh, you can see that uh, Amy, uh, two of me, uh, Ellen, we're site administrators. Marty's on here, actually, the next page. Uh, global administrators can edit all the sites. There are site administrators. Let's just go to, oh, so here's an, here's an example. So I created two accounts for myself. One is a global administrator, and one is a site administrator. So if you want to create, a, if you are a site administrator, you get to create users for your site and assign them different permissions, like editor, reviewer, um, there's a couple of other ones, and they just gradually get lower and lower to the point where you can't do very much. Um, so that's where you can edit metadata, you can edit other users, you can sort of, you have pretty fine grained control of who is doing what on your site. So you are all editors of the Manitos Community Memory site, um, but, one, if, but to experiment further, right, we can create new sites for you. I think you can actually create sites as, your, as yourself, as editors. Uh, and then you can add other users, and you can do everything within the purview of that site. Um, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, um, each group can make their own site for their institution or whatever to, to make their thing. Correct. And then, as an administrator, you would be able to take that and put it in as another page on the site that we're yes. supposed to be doing, yes. correct? Yes. And then that way we have a safeguard because their stuff isn't getting deleted or messed with or whatever, right. but yet you still have the other site that it still has safeguards to it, but it's accessed by everyone. Yeah, so you, yeah, you're describing it very well. So what the permissions allow us to do is that even though we might have 10 different sites, you're all uploading content, 
into the same database so other people can see it and use it to tell stories, to create pages, but they can't edit it, they can't delete it, they can't mess with the items. They might be able to see it, they can see it and use it, right? That's the point of having all of the, all of the stuff go into the same bucket, right? But then having different sites with different levels of permissions drawing from that same big bucket, right? So you all have access to the shared digital heritage repository, but you're creating different sites that look different, that have different permissions, that have different users, and so on. Right? So the sites, site, it's, it's a little confusing because when I say site, you think of a website, right? And you think of sort of uh, the, the, the presentation. But for Omeka, Omeka terminology, site really means it's a collection of users, it's a collection of pages, uh, permissions, and so on. So it seems like a good question to ask this, which I think is a question that background of a lot of people's concerns or just want to know how this is going to work, right? So you're a site administrator, you've uploaded a bunch of stuff, and you control the permissions over what can be done with it, right? Because this is going to come up with, you know, different communities wanting to have, to be able to have to be asked what stuff gets used and things like that. What is the way, let's see how to put this. What are the current kinds of restrictions people can do as far as either permissions or or conditions of use, like saying you can't crop or alter an image if that's important to them, and or how do different site administrators communicate with each other to share resources, like say something goes, I want to use 25 of your pictures, and, and clarify those kinds of um, permissions and gatekeeper rules. So, is that determined, like where does that get determined within this? Is it just something that they can have rules for already? Yes. Or do people start to be able to decide this for themselves? Um, I've pulled up a list of the, the permissions, right? So global administrator, that's uh, that's somebody who has control over all the sites at nndigitalheritage.org. That's a global administrator. Site administrator, somebody who's created a site and wants to administer it. Editor is what you all are, so you can you can add content, right? But you can't edit other people's uh, uh, edit other people's pages, right? You can create your own pages, so that has a particular set of permissions. I don't know off the top of my head exactly what researcher, author, reviewer, editor. I don't know exactly what those roles can and can't do. So I'd have to look that up in the in the book. We can talk about that more uh, later on in terms of exactly what these are the set roles, and this is this is it's predetermined what these roles allow you to do. Uh, it's an order of privilege, so researcher allows, I don't know what that does, but it's the most restrictive, right? So the least amount of editing. Maybe you can add a new item uh, and edit your own items, but no one else's. I'm not exactly sure. But that's how, this is how permissions are set up in general. These are the preset categories. Uh, and so I'll look up uh, over break exactly what that, what that entails. Is there a way for everyone to communicate through Omega, or is, is that something everyone should set up separately? Yeah, as far as I know, good question. As far as I know, Mecca doesn't really, it doesn't have any built-in, you know, list functions or communication functions. We need to figure that out. Yeah, it's okay. really, it, it, I, yeah, I, I, if there is, I'm not sure how it works. I haven't used it or seen it. Okay. Uh, there might be a module. Uh, as Amy mentioned before, Omeka is open source software. A lot of people write plugins that extend the functionality. There might be a plugin that does that, but I'm not sure. Cool. Thank you. So, what is the difference between a site and a page, and where would the pages show up, like in the dashboard? Again. A site is a collection of pages. Okay. So. Uh, I made a test site, oh, good. How to interact with it. So you can you, you should you should all as editors here you should be able to add a new site right obviously someone did you all have the same permissions. Let's try it. Um, Let's try to do it. Well, I know I can. So, uh, but other people are already have right. So it's here it is. Um, so here are the sites that are on this the New Mexico Digital Heritage platform. Um, you all have permissions, you are all editors of the Manitos Community Memory Project. Uh, so if I click on, sorry, if 
if I just click the name as I did, okay, it brings up this page, which is this basic information. If you want to edit more of the site, you have to click the edit button. But I don't have that test site on this. I just have Monados Community Manager. That's the only site I have. Because you you don't have permission. There is a the, so the site was Thank made you. to be in whoever made it, set it she, to be she, she, I can always see everything because I'm yeah. a global administrator, but you won't be. She made it, but, the, but um, right now it's not. Okay. So when you want to edit pages of a site, you need to make sure that you've selected your site. So I've selected test site. I just clicked on the, the name. Um, and it allows me here now, and the left nav has changed, so that I can see a tab for page, a, a link for pages. So if I click on pages, then there's a welcome page. I can add a new page, and, and so on. But that there's a two-step process to be able to work with pages. First, you have to select your site, right? You have to select the Manitos. You only have one, so it, but I don't think it automatically selects it for you. So when you see this list, you need to click on, click on it. Um, and then you'll notice it says pages here, and that's where you can get to the list of pages. So if I wanted to look at my page, or excuse me, my site, my site, my test site, in, as somebody, of the, a member of the public would, as they like were going through the Google sphere or whatever, how would I, where is it where outside is it? of the editing realm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good question. Let me go back to test site. The, the URL formula, oh, you can't see it because it's way too small. Um, it's uh, nmdigitalheritage.org slash s slash test dash site. So whatever you name the page is going to be there. Um, let's see, I think I can get, if I edit it instead of going to it, the URL slug. The URL slug is sort of oh, okay. the, it's, that's, that's the last part of the URL, and the first part of the URL is always the same. And then digitalheritage.org slash s slash URL slug. If that makes any sense. That's just the formula it uses for creating sites. It does have the ability, we won't go into the technical details, but it does have the ability to use a different uh, URL. So if you buy your own URL that isn't related to it and digitalheritage.org, you can have this sort of link to uh, an outside uh, URL. So the URLs become a movement. So if somebody's within the sort of welcome page for the, the New Mexico Digital Heritage, would they see like a link somewhere? Um, Oh, where do you see, okay? Where do you see a link to the site? Yeah, is there would there be a way for them to navigate to my site from the sort of top level of the Mexico Digital Heritage? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you can create a home for the for the sort of the suite of sites. You can create a home page, right? And you can put on whatever you want. So it doesn't automatically give you a pretty home page with all the sites and so on. Uh, but that's where you would be able to edit. Uh, edit the page to uh, to have links to the different sites and so on. Yeah. So, like as a as a editor within this larger many those community um, project realm, and like lots of us might have different sites, and I want somebody to find sort of my collection that I've put together for the Manitos thing mm -hmm. as they're interacting with the Manitos larger sphere. How how would they? You would have to have it? have his permission to do. No, you can. When you upload items, you can you can uh, put it in item sets or tag it in a certain way, and that will and that will determine sort of who can see it. So if you want everyone to be able to see it, that will be that will be. Okay. That's where that's where you do it. Is when you're adding items. It's part of sort of the metadata of the item of sort of who who can who can see it. So does that make sense? So, so it's possible to... as your as a site administrator, you can say, I'm interested in looking at these collections of these item sets that other people have uploaded, right? Because not everything will be of interest to what you're doing, right? But you can sort of select it so that when you add an image or whatever, you don't have to wait through the entire collection. You can filter it out. Okay. Sorry, I know that you probably won't get on, but just because I think it's going to be an important thing down the road. So this is actually a very easy way for, say, people want to put things into the archive but don't want to share it yet or, mm -hmm. or keep it totally private. The, those 
people can be assured that this can happen. They can do their contribution so it doesn't get lost, but it can all stay safe and secret until they're ready to share it. That's right. Okay. That's right. right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. It's meant to give you pretty fine-grained control over what people can do or what you do with your items, right? Within the context of your site, you're not going to be able to control other sites' items, right? Obviously by design. But for your stuff that you're uploading, you get to control uh, its visibility and sort of how it gets how it gets related to other resources. Okay. Thank you. Um, would we have the ability to restrict people from downloading? Like, like not downloading an image, yes. for instance. Uh, not that I know of. Uh, there may be a plugin or something to do that. It's actually a little bit tricky to stop people from downloading an image because that's the default behavior of the web. So you have to sort of embed an image in an image viewer that blocks that functionality from the browser. So yeah, we can. I mean, it is possible to enable that. That's not part of what Omeka does automatically. So right now, no, we don't have a way of doing that, but it's something that um, we could enable if that was something a lot of people or, or anyone really thought was important for their work. Um, and that's part of what I want to talk about in the morning session. I think we'll take a break soon, but sort of before we all disperse, is like, what are these requirements that we should start building into the technical infrastructure? Are there permissions that you want and don't see here? Are there different levels? There's a lot of customization we can do uh, not easily, no, I shouldn't say not easily, not quickly through the admin screen, but there's other customization we can do uh, behind the scenes after the workshop is over to allow you to use this platform the way you want to use it. Yeah. Can you do a best practices thing where the original item is, is cataloged but not seen, and then the one that shows up is a smaller TPI so that even people did download it, they wouldn't be happy with the results, and so it would get less use? Yeah, you can certainly, the images, when you put them on your page, you can certainly put a lower resolution version on the page, right? So you still have the higher res archive version in the database to use internally or for whatever reason. But then the one you show is definitely smaller, right? Um, and there's also, when you have images, especially batch images, you might want to upload. Uh, you might upload multiple versions, like the full res version and then the, the public version, which is much smaller and sort of grainier. So it's obvious that people need to ask permission for the better one, right? Yeah, maybe. So we could actually leave today with a bunch of sites, right? Ghost Ranch, uh, Abiquiu, yes. um, Dixon, whatever. And they're attached to the site administrator, you know, and then they can yes. add they decide what pages they want to add, right? And some of them are not all uh, village-based, like we might have one them all, or you know, whatever makes sense for the Manitos project, right? And then, um, and then people are good to go in terms of adding content. So, so if Jason wants to add their Seiki project or their Vatican mm -hmm. stand, yeah. You know, yeah, I think that would be a great thing to work on later this morning or after lunch, um, and. Uh, so people will have, you know, who know they want to have a site and be a site administrator. Yeah, I mean, let's just, to be honest, we're all in a little bit of uncharted territory here. Omeka S is a relatively new uh, platform. I mean, Omeka's been around for a while, but Omeka S is sort of the site uh, hosting of multiple sites and permissions and so on. Uh, it's a relatively new thing. People are still figuring out best ways of, of doing it. The whole reason it was created is exactly for this room, right? People who want to have a more coherent collection of New Mexico digital, or not New Mexico, but digital heritage generally, right? They want to have sort of some centralization. We want to have everything together that makes it more visible and discoverable and findable and so on. But we each have different needs for it. We have different projects. We want different websites. We want to tell different stories. We want to have different everything, right? So how do you how do you balance that? And that's what it's a relatively new problem. Right? How do you balance sort of this distributed, uh, you know, this centralized database, but distributed sort of sharing, uh, and manage permissions accordingly? So I definitely don't have all the answers of what you know, how, what's the best way to do all these things. We're figuring it out. Uh, one reason I'm so excited for this workshop is to get us thinking about sort of how can we start using this going forward. And there's certainly going to be growing pains. 
Um, but one of the things that I'm committed to, is, this is the reason that I was talking about the certificate in digital heritage studies. This is the stuff we're sort of thinking about through classes and through the program and the certificate is how do we how do we do this? Right? How does this work? How does it how does it work right now? How does it how does it need to work five years from now? How do we continue to build build it? Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping we can create just even if you're not sure if you want to use it, create a site, create a user, throw up some new items, uh, see what happens. Uh, then you'll generate questions, and then we'll figure it out. Right? I don't know everything about Omeka S. I'm relatively new to it. I'm really good at figuring things out, uh, and I'm really good at sort of customizing software. So that's my background. Uh, as well, so we can we can get it to do what you need it to do, and that's what I want to talk about later today. About what are the technical things we need to start moving forward? Whether it's permissions, whether it's different kind of plugins, image viewers. What do, what do we need that Omeka doesn't give us just by default? Uh, and then we can start figuring out how to make that happen over over time. Okay, I just made a site. Um, you can probably see it, but nobody else can because I can't even see my own if I go to the big site. Too. Okay. Um, in order to, um, I downloaded a picture and the whole thing. I got something on there. Okay. Um, as you can see, they all have a circle with a line through it, which means nobody can see it. Okay. Um, there is a, a, a thing for being able to allow people to see it from my site, but I literally have to go through all 40 members individually to download it to allow that person to see it, or that person to see it. I have n no way of making it so that the community can see it. And maybe I don't want that permission. Maybe you should, as an administrator, check each of our sites and talk to us individually to say, okay, now what, what do you want shared? What don't you want shared? Or in that respect, and then make sure that, you know, somebody's not getting on there and putting all kinds of weird crap on some page. I didn't quite follow the beginning. You were trying to share it with some people and not others? Yeah, there, so. there is a place for me to go on my site, this is your site. Right. and share it with individuals. Okay. Let me get back to where I was. Go to users. So I can go to user permissions. Right. And if I click on it, there is a list that I can go through individually and let each person have permission to see my site. It's not connecting it to the community. I don't see any place where I can connect it to the community. You mean make it visible? Come to, look at my page. To make it visible to everyone? Yeah. Either well to make it part of to make my site part of the community. Well this drawing from the well is a site that you can go into. How, how did that work? It's different from what you What did. drawing from the well? There's a, the second thing that he showed is drawing from the well, and it's a website. You could go into it. No, no, no. That's a website. That has yeah. nothing to do so with this can, type of site. Your site is private mm -hmm. now? Correct. And so if you want other people to see it, there's this, if you click the I button, that makes it public. Okay. And so. You, what you were talking about just now was adding users to your site, and it's not people who can see it. Those would be administrators of some kind. Those okay. are people who can edit items, who can create pages. You can set the permissions to what you want, but you are actually adding users as administrators. You can't set who can see it and who can't. That's impossible. It's either public on the web or Okay, it's I have clicked the eye. Can anybody see my site besides them? You can see it? It's just called S-I-T-E. <coughs> okay, so I click the eyeball and I am now a page on the site. So, I mean, I'm able to, on my test site, I'm able to use the URL that you gave, gave me yep. and go to it yep. using the navigation bar in Google. Right. And I'm able to use a URL to go to a page that I made within my site mm -hmm. using the navigation bar. Um, but okay. when I'm moving around the New Mexico Digital Heritage sort of opening page, you know, with the, the Buffalo Wood block and whatnot, yep. or when I'm moving around um, the Manitos sort of public interface, not the not the back end where we've been adding things, but right, the public right, right. interface, I'm not seeing any way to travel to my site via links or anything. And so I'm 
curious, or my my welcome page for my mm -hmm. site. And so I'm curious how that so where is relationship your, might exist. Yeah. Where is your where is your site here? Yeah. This is the question. Yeah. Yeah. Where individual sites or under New Mexico Heritage were not sites under the Meninos community. Yeah, that, that, that was my question too, Fred, was if, if um, she wants to start a site for um, New Mexico African American history, or if you want to decide they yep. don't want to be limited to Latinos, there's still New Mexico Digital Heritage, uh, yep. but they're just not Latinos, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. right. Um, this, so we, just for test purposes, we set this to be the default page for the site. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously it's in the, within the Meditos project. We, do, we can create a completely different page, and we need to, mm -hmm. to create a completely different page that will directly link to this to individual sites. That's where, so the idea is that when you go to nmdigitalheritage.org right now, I'm going to just clear out the URL, I'm just going to go to nmdigitalheritage.org, right? It takes us to this page, right? But look at the URL. You can't see the URL, but you can see it on your own computer. Mm -hmm. It takes us to the Manitos page welcome, right? It takes us to the welcome page for the Manitos project. Mm -hmm. We can s stop doing that, right? We only had the one project, so that's what we set up. Now that we have other sites, we will make a different landing page that talks about what New Mexico Digital Heritage is, and Manitos will be one link, and site will be another link, and test site will be another link, mm -hmm. and we'll have it there, right? So we just need to make that other page. Uh, as, and set that as the default home page. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so, for side, I understand that you were asked the, the words of the my master, the slide will be in tiny array slash log. Yeah. So the slide is going to be the rest of the um, The reason I'm asking that for this is the next thing is summary. What do I put into that? Because I don't know if I go back and edit it later. You can always edit it later. Oh, you can. Yeah, yeah, everything you can edit, you can always edit later. You can, it's, there's never just a one time. Because I got this from new page, from ad side. So yeah. Okay, but what exactly is the summary? Is the, the summary um, is, it's a bit of text that goes sort of on the web page, it's kind of behind the scenes, and it helps search engines find you, so that summary text becomes important. Um, I'm not sure if it, you, you might be able to sort of add it as a block on a page. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. I look into more of the how the summary gets okay. used internally. I can't. So I, I just I won't put anything in some summary down there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, you can always add it later, right? If you're unsure, this is we're all just playing around. Just try things. You can always delete it, you can change it. You can always edit it later. There's nothing permanent. So, um, what are the guidelines for a slug? I mean, do you like dash and Google? Is that the guidelines for that? Yep. Well, you can't have spaces, uh, otherwise you get percent two zero in the URL, which looks really ugly. So, you, and I don't think Omeka will allow you to have spaces. It puts a dash in for you. So, it's whatever whatever you name your site, it tries to make the slug the same thing, but it replaces spaces with dashes. Uh, and it makes it all lowercase. Whatever you name it is 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 really up to you. Um, it's part of the URL, and URLs are very important for search engines. So if there's key key terms, right, the main you know the main terms need to need to be there. Or if you want to differentiate yourself from a similar URL, then that would be a reason to, to add it. But the simpler, the better. Um, that's a great question for to think about in general. Sort of as we try to all create sites, so do we have a sort of best practices for naming? Um, and nothing is, as far as I know, even once you create a site, you can rename it. Uh, so if you decide later, oh, I really want it, I really want it to be this, you can go back and switch. I mean, you don't want to do that all the time, obviously, because it messes up search engine caching and other stuff. But there's nothing. So as far as we're learning how this works now, um, and what you suggested sounded sounded so totally fine. Can you scroll down to the um, Google Slide Manager? Yes. So this is default default Omeka functionality that we may or may not want to keep, uh, which is that the home page by default just shows a list of items. 
Which, I mean, you definitely don't want to keep this long term because it'd be crazy long. But I clicked on, and it's a live website, so you can move around in it. How, yeah. How did that get loaded? She did it. How did this? Judy did. This um, this image. Yes, but once you click on it, it becomes a live website. You can go in and click on all those buttons. Right. Uh, because the, when someone uploaded this item, right, they uploaded looks like a screenshot of the website, and they the type is website, which and makes it a link. Oh, I see. She included the URL. Right. So in the metadata for this item, it has a URL, right? Uh, a that takes us to what this what this is. So can anybody do that? You can just is that the way to upload? A particular website you want to share? That's what really she did. Yeah. She just figured out how to do it yesterday. Yes, you can do that. That's that's usually you wouldn't add an item uh, in the collection just as a as a website. You would just make a link on a page to the website. So we would contact you then. No, you can do that on your own pages. You can make links to websites. You can add images. You can do whatever you want on your own pages within your site and link to wherever you want to go. And then anybody can use that link. Yes. Mm -hmm. Including your WordPress. Wow, that's fantastic. Can you go back to the sites? You see the bond house? I want the bond house under Manitos. How did I? You want it to be visible? I want it under Manitos Community Memory as one of the links under that. Is that what you do? Do you want to create a site or do you want to create a page? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's a site or a page. <laughs> the Man the Manitas Community Memory, that's gonna be that's one site. That's right? It's one project. Uh, if you want us uh, uh, so we can create pages as part of that site, there can be an infinite number of pages. Right? But if you want a separate website, or if you want a separate project that has its own set of pages. No, I think we should all well, this is my opinion that Ghost Ranch and Embudo and the Bond House should be under Manitos Community Memories. Well, they're really separate projects, though. Manitos, sorry, I can't say. They're really separate projects, so it makes sense to have different sites because they want to, they each have their own set of people who are working on it and their own users and so on. Yeah. But don't we want to give Manitos credit for it? I mean, like... Well, within the within the within the Manitos community memory site, we'll certainly link to other projects and sites that are drawn from this database we're creating. Uh, I don't know if it would help people if you brought us another site that could show what a landing page is and then show the different sites within the overall structure that might give people a better. Uh, if I knew one off the top of my head, but I would. The Georgetown Cyber Site is like that. It definitely had a nice homepage. I don't know if it has multiple sites within it. Well, it had multiple, I think it did. Because that was no mega. Yes, it was. It may be the pages, not sites, I'm not sure. I will look, uh, we can, yeah, this landing. Georgetown. Georgetown uh, support. Okay. It's like slavery archive. There you go. Georgetown. Georgetown slavery archive. So this is a this is a standard Omeka site. This is Omeka S. I'm oh, sorry, Omeka Classic. This is the, the standard default view. You, if I, this slaveryarchive.georgetown.edu takes us to this. You saw a different, mark when Marjorie brought this up, it had a different landing page and a slightly different URL. If you click in that home page, you end up here, right? This is, this is the basic site, and this is the standard Omeka view that you get. Featured items, featured collections, featured exhibits. I was going to talk about this before we got into sites and pages, so maybe we'll do this uh, after a break. Yeah. Uh, and it shows some items here, right? This is the standard Omeka view. Um, we can make, so you can have a view like this for your own site, uh, but it makes sense that for the nmdigitalheritage.org, that home page will really be a directory of all the different sites and projects that you will be creating. 
at least for now, we'll, we'll figure out what we want to do with it over time. But that will be, that'll be what makes these sites most visible, right? For now. So this would be like our personal sites as such. This would and be then, this would be like the home page for your site. And then but this is actually connected and nested under another Georgetown site, which would be I, I'm not sure in this case if that's true, but it would be true for our case. Okay. Would it help to to do what you said and uh, for those institutions that are uh, wanna be identified with the Magnetos community memory project? to um, standardize the URLs? Does that make a difference? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, if there was a format that included Manitas in the URL oh, in the, the URL, URL or something right. like that? Uh, um, The best way in that case, if you wanted to have your URL under, if you wanted to have your set of pages in under the Manitos URL, the best way to do that instead of creating a new site would be to create a set of pages within the Manitos project. Mm -hmm. But that is a very different thing administratively than having yeah, a separate site that you can administer. Could you click on maybe the collections? It seems like it has some thematic groupings that might be something that could grow organically out of sort of us thinking about Manitos and within mm -hmm. Manitos there's these thematic Yes, so um, one of the things I mentioned and didn't really explain was item collections. You saw that in the, over here, item sets. Uh -huh. uh, I guess they're called item sets in Omega S, but uh, they used to be called collections. Uh, and this is sort of collections that the Georgetown Slavery Archive has created sort of to group sets of items that they've uploaded. Um, and these, as an administrator of a site, you can create whatever collections you want. You can change the name at, over time as you, as the collection grows dynamically. You continue to add items. Uh, if we just view the items here, you get the standard item viewer. You can search and tab for the pages and so on. Yep. How difficult would it be for each person to make their own site and then for it to be combined under a site that is Manitos, if it is Manitos. Another thing we can do, sorry, it took me a long time to figure this out because uh, it's a misunderstanding. One thing we can do is, we, so we've been all working under the general URL NM Digital Heritage, right? We can make, and that's where Omega S lives, that's the platform, that's the URL. We can make another Omega S instance, another platform, and make that URL ManitosCommunityMemory.org, right? And then that will be the base URL, right? Rather than in a digital heritage. And then all the Manito stuff might just go there. If we, does that make sense? So do people like that idea? Say it again. So if you're, if, you're, if you're concerned that you don't want your URL to have in a digital heritage in it, we can just, we can get I don't a different think that's the problem. That's not the problem. Okay. The problem is, is they want, you know, there's a couple of people who aren't Manitos. Right. That's fine, but the majority are Manitos, that's what the name of the thing is, so they want all of their sites to be under that big bird. They want to nest under there, mm -hmm. but, but right. still have control of their own sites. Because yeah. there's still going to be New Mexico Digital Heritage, right? For, for other reasons, yeah. yeah. For everything. So I, we could create a, a Manitos, whatever the URL is, communitymemory.org. Right? And then that will be sort of the, the landing page, but then it will take people to specifically Manito sites that you're creating now. Does that make sense? And then so, that would still be connected to the New Mexico Heritage. It'll be separate, but certainly we could create a link on the NM Digital Heritage to the, okay. to the Manitos URL. Okay. But they will be separate Omeka installations, so they'll be different global administrators. I mean, it might be the same person, but they, you know, it's different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they're just two separate things. But certainly that would, that would, in the URL, right, it would be Manitos memory dash and then the name of your site, right? If that's how we wanted to make the sites, individual Manitos sites more clearly delineated in the URL, that's the best mm -hmm. way. Yeah, okay, great. Sorry it took me 45 minutes to understand what was happening.
Can you just, uh, as a sort of test, and on that, people are going to start working on stuff now. Uh, can their sites, if they want them, under this new Benitos.org banner or whatever, can we call migrated over, or should we start over before everybody really starts uploading stuff? It's possible to download everything automatically from the site we've been or the, yeah, the site we've been using and re-upload it, but it's far easier to just start uploading in the new place. Yeah. So maybe for now, just in the NM Digital Heritage thing, use that as a sandbox to play around with different sites and permissions and see what you can and can't do. And then uh, when we're ready to, uh, I, can, I can do this this afternoon or this morning is to um, uh, create that new URL, and we can start, you know, creating users and so on there. But I think it'll be easier if we, if that's what we want to do. I think it's easier to re-upload items there rather than try to migrate. Right. Okay. So, so we will kind of need to decide. Right? Like, that's, that's one that's thing. Guess. That's one thing we should decide before everyone leaves at two or three or whenever the final bell rings. That would be that would be very important to know while we're together. That's something we can talk about. It. Um, I just want to play devil's advocate for a second to make things more complicated. Because what I'm, what I'm hearing from people is, and, and, and uh, there's sort of two parts of this. There's what we see administratively when we're logged into Omega, and what the public sees when they come in. <clears throat> and it seems like, you know, administratively, everybody's going to have their own sites that are as well as the Manito site. So you, you guys are going to be site administrators for the Ghost Ranch site, or site administrators for the Nixon and Pluto sites, um, as well as the Manito site. But what we want is something where the public comes in and says, who is part of the Manito's community memory? Well, it's Abby Hewitt's Dixon, it's in Espanola, it's Ghost Ranch, it's Northern New Mexico Community College, it's Bond House. And that can all be done in the content on the landing page. So that, that can be sort of hand built so that anybody who's coming in, and this would be whether you have a Manitos URL or not, or the New Mexico Digital Heritage URL or not, that anybody who's coming in can see all the project partners and contributors who, who are still maintaining their own sites that are not, you know, sub sub sets of the Magneto site, but because it's all it's all one database, you all get to share your set of permissions that way. Um, but anybody coming in will see that all your work is part of this larger project. It's, I mean, I guess I guess I'm I'm wondering if there's really a need for a separate instantiation of the database, or whether it's a matter of uh, amending the content on the landing page so it's visible who all the the reason I, I picked New Mexico or NM Digital Heritage was because I, I want I want there to be lots of projects like these that you're working on that aren't just about Manitos. So it would be a it would be sort of a centralization for lots of similar kinds of projects about different regions, about different people. Um, I think Alan's suggestion is is a good one in that one of the things that we can do sort of administratively in the back end is have different sites which correspond to your institution and your archive and your sort of users and your administrative needs. Within the context of the Manito site, we can have a page or a set of page that really tells the stories and showcases what you have that you would have put on your own site. So one of the things we need to think through is so when we talk about site, that's an Omeka term for how things get organized in terms of permissions and pages and so on. But it doesn't have to mean you have a separate website, right? Because maybe you don't need a separate website. Maybe you just need a, a set of pages to look at the items that are part of your collection, in which case those pages would just be under the Manito site, right? Rather than a whole separate website with a separate URL and so on. There's lots of ways to sort of to cut it up. And there's no obvious or easy solution. We'll have to think through, like, how do we want to organize ourselves? How does this fit into a larger effort to collect uh, digital heritage in New Mexico. How does my project relate to these other ones? Um, that's something that we just have to talk through. Obviously, we made a good start on that. Um, but I think that's 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 a great uh, goal for the end of the workshop. Is to think about how do we want to sort of organize this and what does it look like administratively. It's an excellent distinction. Uh, 
and what do we call it in terms of the Omeka backend, and what does it look like to everyone else? Right? Are there any other immediate questions? We've been going for a while, and probably you need a break. I kind of need a break. Okay. Um, you mean how to display it on a page? Everything. So this is again Omeka S. And all these th these sites we talked about them as this discrete separate entities, but they all share that database. Right, so an item that you uploaded yesterday is going to be, it's, everything is visible for these different sites. We might have to look at the permissions to see, there might be something here that I'm not thinking through or, or I misunderstand what the default is. Uh, but it should be, should be possible for all the sites to see the content that we've uploaded. Okay, they have different language for the